What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with The Golden Perspective. Today, once again, we are looking at this week's on-chain newsletter from Glassnodes Insights. It's week 41, 2022, a calm before the storm. Before we get into that, I want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. Be sure to turn on the post notifications while you're down there. Like, comment, share, go down to the description, read all about the other things uh, I have in there. There's a bunch of useful links and whatnot. Follow me over on library. Let's get going. In a stark contrast to highly volatile equity, credit, and forex markets, Bitcoin has remained remarkably stable in recent weeks. With Bitcoin gaining ground on many traditional assets, we evaluate if true bottom formation may be in play and adjust several metrics for the influence of lost coins. Recent weeks have seen an uncharacteristically low degree of volatility in Bitcoin prices in stark contrast to equity, credit, and forex markets. Bitcoin markets traded slightly higher this week, rallying from a low of 19,037 to a high of 20,406. Prices remain range bound, consolidating for over 120 days now since the major deleveraging event in mid June. As investors attempt to establish a bear market floor, we can compare the market structure to past cycle lows. In this edition, we undertake a series of studies assessing the behavior of whale sized entities and make adjustments to many bottom formation metrics to better account for the influence of lost and long huddled coins. So here we are, that little shaded area to the far right of week 41. A fragile equilibrium. Generally, a sustained price momentum can often be associated with supporting with a supporting trend in net on-chain accumulation or distribution. This correlation is often most heavily driven by larger entities' behavior, for instance, high net worth individuals, whales, and institutional capital. The significance of large entities can be gauged by their share of the total circulating supply, as the relative address supply distribution chart shows, bigger addresses holding more than 100 BTC has gradually declined from 70% to 60% share in of the total supply since early 2011, although note that the coin value has changed significantly over this time. This we can see that illustration. The accumulation trend score reflects the aggregated balance change intensity of active investors over the past 30 days, where a higher weight is assigned to larger entities. Approaching value of one indicates that on aggregate larger entities or large subset of the network are adding meaningful volumes to their on-chain balance and vice versa for values close to zero. Reviewing values during the later stages of the 2018-19 bear market, a series of distinctive intervals can be identified. The pre Sorry, pre-capitulation equilibrium. I'll say that once again. Pre-capitulation equilibrium. While the spot price converges towards the long-lasting cycle baseline, the dash line, the supply and demand sides remain in equilibrium. Then there's capitulation. With price action breaking low, sorry, with price action breaking below the cycle baseline, the market enters a capitulation phase. Interestingly, the larger entities tend to intensify their accumulation. These strong accumulation intervals are usually found by an equilibrium period. Bottom discovery. Throughout the bottom formation stage, due to the lack of demand, there are one or more incidents that a short-term rally is met with large entities distribution, known as bar bear market rallies. Remarkably, after breaking the current cycle baseline at 30,000, a series of consecutive events similar to the 2018-19 bear market has taken place. Throughout the capitulation in early 2022, the accumulation trend score indicates significant accumulation by large entity as has taken place, as well as the seizure of the recent bear market rally to 24,500 for exit liquidity. At present, this metric suggests an equilibrium neutral structure in the market, which remains similar to early 2019. Interesting. This is a new, uh, a new chart I've never seen before. Very nice. To conduct a more detailed analysis, the accumulation trend score by cohort can be consulted. 
Here we compare the market structure to the post capitulation shade stage of the 2018-19 bear market. We can see that large entities, particular 1,000 to 10,000 BTC wallets contributed to a distribution event in red during a rally of the lows in March of 2019 and entered a period of equilibrium afterwards. Small retail uh, participants, less than one BTC, maintained heavy accumulation in blue throughout 18, 2018 and 19. So right here, big giant red section, bear market rally distribution, final sell-offs. In our current market structure, and noting an approximate 10x in BTC prices, we can see very similar behavior occurring in large entities. However, driven more so by the 100 to 1,000 BTC cohort during the August rally. In addition to the relatively relative neutrality across small to medium address cohorts, the accumulation trend score for whales holding 1,000 to 10,000 BTC highlights aggressive accumulation since, September, since late September. Whales owning greater than 10,000 BTC are biased towards weak distribution over recent months. <coughs> We can see increased net whale withdrawal volumes in recent weeks with a net outflow from exchanges hitting 15.7 thousand BTC, which is the largest since June of 2022. <coughs> so in this particular one, in red are whale deposits to exchanges, so meaning they probably want to sell, and in blue are withdrawals from exchanges, meaning they probably are going to continue to hold. So. Back way over here, we see the red drop off. So there was a, uh, or the red went up, which is a bunch of selling happening. And then there's an uptick, uptick in withdrawals, meaning they're going to be holding on. We calculate the cost basis for all whales who have been actively speculating over a chosen period of time, can deliver a threshold level that is psychologically important to these investors. By price stamping the deposits and withdrawal volumes of the whale cohort of 1,000 plus BTC to and from exchanges, we can estimate the average price of whale deposits withdrawals since January 2017. This whale cost basis is currently around 15,800. Declining profit and rising pain. As discussed in the previous week 25 article, tracking and the diminishing supply in profit is a powerful technique to identify points of elevated financial stress which have exhausted sellers in previous cycles. Surveying the percent supply and profit during the bottom formation stages of prior bear markets shows that cyclical lows have generally occurred alongside supply profitability of 40 to 42 percent. Currently, 50 percent of the circulating supply is in an unrealized profit suggesting that supply profitability remains elevated in relation to historical analogs. This insinuates a full detox in profitability may not have occurred yet. Moreover, the rising trend of cyclical lows in the percent supply and profit graph has been a prominent pattern since the 2014-2015 bear market. A key driver of this macro trend is the impact of lost coins and inactive supply, including the Potoshi coins. To investigate the effect of these coins, the chart below illustrates the total supply in profit. I think that meant Satoshi coins. Alongside the supply last active plus seven years ago, which can be presumed lost or inactive. Currently, 3.7 million Bitcoins have been inactive over the past seven plus years, which is equal to 34% of the current supply and profit. By adjusting the supply and profit with this inactive supply, we can calculate the adjusted percent of supply and profit. The resulting chart, the resulting chart shows that at the lowest point of bear cycles tends to drop to around 39%. However, with a similar conclusion, it has been worse in prior cycles. 
The intensity of implied financial strain on the remaining investors can be traced by the relative unrealized profit metric. This indicator measures the normalized total profit of all coins in the supply, which adjusts for an increase in capital flows into the Bitcoin asset each cycle. An investigation of historical data shows that when aggregated unrealized profit compresses to around 30% of the market cap, a large proportion of the selling pressure has been alleviated in what we call seller exhaustion. The price depreciation since November of 2021 has caused this ratio to sink to 0.37, reflecting a meaningful but not as painful outcome as prior lows. The net unrealized profit loss, NUPL, is a metric which maps out the difference between unrealized profit and loss of the, net, of the network as a proportion of the market cap. NUPL takes into account both the loss and profit held in the supply through various phases of market cycle. Since early June, NUPL has dropped into a compressed negative range of 0% to minus 15% on two separate events, lasting a total of 88 days so far. From a comparative perspective, NUPL has traded down to levels lower than minus 25% in prior cycles and remained negative for between 134 days in 2018-19 to 301 days in 14-15. Note that NUPL cycles, cycle lows have gradually climbed as a result of both lost and long huddled coins. And I think it's good to note that if you look at the much older one, the trend so far between those two is you went from 301 days to 134 days to what we're currently in now, which I think is 88 days. Now we can apply the same methodology utilized to adjust the percent of supply and profit for the NUPL metric. This corrects for any contr contribution from inactive supply producing the adjusted net unrealized profit loss, the ANUPL. A key observation from this modification is that by removing the impact of the seven plus year old coins as inactive supply, ANUPL has been trading below zero for the last 119 days, which is comparable with the time length of prior bear markets bottom formation phase. Also, the lowest value recorded for ANUPL is at minus 39% and the current bear market has dropped below negative 25% threshold, which indicates the severity of ongoing undervalued market structure. <clears throat> Distribution of pain and gain. After evaluating the intensity of financial stress across the network, we can examine its distribution of across both long-term holder and short-term holders. This analysis aims to identify equivalent market structure patterns during the bear market. Looking at short-term holder supply and profit loss, there are many instances where prices, price corrections paused as the entire greater than 99% of short-term holder supply fell into a loss. At the moment, 18.1% of the total supply is in possession of short-term holder coins with 15.1% held at an unrealized loss. This leaves just 3% of the supply held by short-term holders and in profit, which after such a prolonged downtrend, is likely approaching a degree of seller exhaustion. Studying the long-term supply in long metrics suggests that at points where long-term holder supply in loss surpasses 20% of the total supply, the probability of capitulation amongst these investors reaches a peak. With over 31% of the supply now held by long-term holders in loss, it is increasingly likely the market has passed this stage, which also suggests a similar condition to prior bottoming formations. The market has been in this phase for 1.5 months with a previous cycle duration ranging from six to 10 months. Finally, we can compare the average acquisition price per coin for short-term holder cohort against the long-term long holder cohort. To approximate the relative stress levels, as discussed in week 37 report, the continuous price depreciation during a prolonged bear market leads to the short-term holder realized price to fall below the long-term holder realized price. This market structure denotes periods where the average cost of acquisition over the past 155 days is now lower than the average long-term holder cost basis. 
In other words, those who are just entering have a better cost basis than those who have weathered months of volatility. This is a direct outcome of long-term holder capitulation where coins purchased near the top cycle top are sold and change hands at much lower prices. Two weeks ago, the market entered into this stage and into this stage and compared to prior bears has taken between 145 days and 339 days to recover with the long-term holder cost basis at $23,300 and short-term holders at $22,100, this sets a key price zone <clears throat> to expect resistance at first, but potentially greener pastures if prices trade higher and stay higher. <clears throat> In summary, <clears throat> Bitcoin prices have shown remarkable relative strength of late amidst a highly volatile traditional market backdrop Several macro metrics indicate that Bitcoin investors are establishing what could be a bear market floor with numerous similarities to previous cycle lows. Network profitability has not quite hit the same level of uh, severe financial pain as past cycles. However, adjustment for loss and long huddled coins can explain a reasonable portion of this divergence. In many ways, many on-chain metrics market structure and investor behavior patterns are dotting the i's and crossing the t's for a textbook bear market floor a principal piece which is missing duration of which history would suggest there may be several months still ahead before a full recovery wow what do you think let me know in the comments i'd really love to hear what you got to uh, say about all these different charts and some of these newer metrics that we have not seen before in some of the previous uh, glass nose insights. I really liked some of these ones right here. So yes, please let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments, hit the like, share with a friend, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.